Hey folks, David Stewart here. It's time for another weekly Lovecraft. Today I'm not going to look at a tale so much as just talk about a particular line of criticism that applies to H.P. Lovecraft um, and really has been a little bit more prominent over the last few years. And that's this idea that Lovecraft uh, was a racist and expressed racist views in his stories. And there's lots of ways that you can you can view this or you can come to this conclusion. And one of those ways is actually looking at some of the things that he puts in his stories, particularly uh, mixed race characters. So in a lot of his stories, you hear that there's you know this circle of cultists and their mongrels. Um, it, I think is a term that he used in Call of Cthulhu, or they have some sort of mixed race background that he um, that he talks about, and it's easy to see that that could be racist when all of your like evil cultists are, you know, um, I think some of the the terms he used were like mulatto and and things like that. Um, these are terms that have fallen out of use at least in the United States as far as being politically correct or, or sensitive racially uh, to a person you happen to be talking to, you usually wouldn't call them a mulatto, though that is actually um, an ethnic identity in other countries besides the United States. But so it's easy to come to this conclusion that he um, is expressing his racist views there. But there's actually a couple deeper layers that I think need to be examined before you come to that conclusion and uh, write off his literature as racist or something like that. And I think it's part of the you know, I'll talk about the meta, you know, it's part of the ongoing attempt to destroy figures of the past, at least from a moral standpoint. Figures of the past don't meet the moral standards of today's people, and therefore uh, they are bad and their work should be uh, thrown away and is also bad. Uh, I don't I don't follow that line, even with people who are uh, explicitly hold what would be considered bad moral views today. But in this case, I think that there's actually some deeper levels there. And you can see it with um, a book that hopefully I'll talk about next week called The Shadow Over Innsmouth, one that uh, people have been asking me to talk about. A lot of a lot of people, it's their favorite, uh, favorite Lovecraft story. And one of the core components there is the people of Innsmouth are of some mixed genetic background. The thing is, is that when you actually see these things in context, there's more to it than this idea that they are merely, um, you know, mixed with some other, uh, other race. Rather, that is part of a general background that Lovecraft is writing within and is expressing through his narrators, is a general awareness of race uh, that includes uh, not not necessarily the most politically correct stance towards race mixing. In Shadow Over Innsmouth, the background of that is able to be seen as the prejudice of the people who are in the town surrounding Innsmouth towards the people of Innsmouth. They have some sort of uh, background of the people of South Pacific going far back uh, that causes them to look like mongrels or something like that. Um, in reality, that background is set up to then be removed and show a reality. So when he is talking about people that are mongrels or of mixed race, he's not talking uh, about people who are half black. That's part of the assumption that people are making about these cultists, but in reality, they're mixed with something darker, and that's uh, that's a, a piece that people forget or they intentionally overlook when they're trying to assassinate Lovecraft. And in Shadow Over Innsmouth, it's uh, it's very explicit. So the narrator, um, when he meets people from Innsmouth, or he meets this bus driver, is the first one. The first thing you notice is that he's not expressing characteristics of somebody who has you know, some kind of uh, South Pacific or not South Pacific, South Pacific background or Caribbean background or, or black background. This person has physical deformities. That's not a racial thing, but rather the people who are looking at Innsmouth, that's their rationalization for the way that these people look. So you're looking at the um, attitude towards people of mixed race. That's really the, the, the people's uh, rationalization and expresses probably a general worldview that was quite common in the 20s and 30s, the time in which Lovecraft actually wrote his stories. And we may look down upon that, we may look our noses down upon that moral, um, that that particular moral 
idiom that's that's part of uh, society and we could probably rightfully look our noses down at it but it's merely the background it's the it's the attitude people have and once that's peeled away then he's revealing actually a horrible reality which is that these characters that uh, other people are rationalizing as having some sort of mixed race background are in fact mixed with something that isn't human uh, and in Shadow Over Innsmouth you see it with deformities They their beards don't look right they have weird hair they're bald uh, their faces are shaped strangely and you also see this in um, some of his other stories where um, say the the, the Dunwich Horror, where you have this boy who is always called goat-like. And it would be easy if you don't understand the context of that to think that the people are calling people of mixed race goat-like, uh, which isn't the case. Rather, the any, any reference towards a mixture of race is really the rationalization because he has this there's a, always a separation between the unbeliever and the true believer in his books. The unbeliever uh, refuses to believe the supernatural and the true believer accepts it immediately. Um, and I, I'll talk about a little bit more about that in just a second. But what's revealed is that that character has like octopus tentacles growing out of his groin, um, that the character is half human, not half black, uh, that the idea of him being half black or being mixed with some other foreign nationality is merely the rationalization there. Now I mentioned the true believer and the unbeliever. I've talked about this in live streams. Um, but one of the things that is present in his books is that the true believers, the people who uh, rightfully fear the dark, rightfully fear the monster, are often foreigners. So the foreigners are the ones who are superstitious, or uh, are less rational than their American than the American protagonist. So the protagonist is usually presented as an agnostic, somewhat um, rationalizing kind of American who doesn't believe in the supernatural. Whereas you have these foreign Polish uh, Italians, they're usually Catholics and they're somewhat mystical and supernatural. Uh, they believe this stuff right away and they rightfully fear the bad churches. They fear the the town. They don't go to Innsmouth. They don't go to these these um, these bad places. And that's. Uh, that's another part of the tapestry of it is that people, you know, in the early 20th century, America had a lot of uh, immigrants from Europe uh, that weren't English. So, um, you know, the original group of American settlers were mostly English. And uh, then you were getting Irish and eventually you're getting people from all over Europe, Scandinavia, Italy, uh, Spain, um, lots of different, uh, lots of different backgrounds coming in. And these people brought with them basically religious beliefs that had been a little bit immune to the enlightenment um, so what you see there with this contrast is people at the time probably looked at italians as being you know some kind of superstitious catholic or something like that but in the story it's the catholics that are always right in the story it's the foreigners who were actually viewing the world correctly and so part of lovecraft's lens there is that the people who you view as less rational may actually have a better understanding of the the truth about the supernatural than your highly rationalizing mind. That the, the highly rational character is in danger because of his inability to accept what is supernatural and what is strange. So I wanted to talk about that a little bit. So whenever you see in a Lovecraft story uh, somebody who's initially presented as uh, being of mixed racial background, usually that is a layer that he's putting up of rationalization to obscure the truth. And as you get deeper into the story, you will understand that there's actually more to those descriptions than uh, what meets the eye. So the cultists in the Call of Cthulhu, although it's not quite as uh, explicit, were of a background that included like voodoo and things like that. But it's slightly hinted at that they weren't, you know, obviously they were of a background that was unknown. Uh, they were mongrels. They were people that weren't of a of a particular community. They weren't of a particular uh, ethnic group. They were really the part of the cultist group. They were something different, uh, and that's really what he's what he's getting at there. Not that he's explicitly saying like race mixing is bad or something like that. That might have been part of the the tapestry of that particular time, but rather that's the layer through which uh, the characters resist 
the supernatural and through which you're able to see the contrast between uh, the supernatural and the real in his story. So I thought I'd talk about that. That's a little bit of my analysis with that. Um, I don't believe even if, you know, Lovecraft held might, what might be considered racially controversial beliefs today, that doesn't mean his work is without merit or shouldn't be evaluated or shouldn't be enjoyed on its own. Uh, indeed, you find most people of the past do not share your sensibilities and that doesn't mean their, or their work is not worth looking at. Um, Homer probably believed in slavery because uh, the Greeks had slaves. That doesn't mean that you shouldn't read the Odyssey. Likewise, you shouldn't uh, dehumanize people that didn't meet some other particular um, set of, of beliefs in the past as well. So thanks so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Of course, you could find more, mom, more about my books at dbspress.com. Uh, if you want to read my sci-fi horror book, it's called uh, Voices of the Void. It does have some Lovecraftian themes, uh, but if, you know the world is, is all mine. Um, check it out, and I'll see you guys next time.